Um, my name's Adi Benari. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Applied Blockchain. Um, and I'm going to have a go at uh, presenting some predictions about blockchain technology. Uh, this is being recorded, so you will be able to hold this against me in the future if I get them wrong. Okay, so first of all, a little bit about the company, and I guess what gives me the right to make these predictions in the first place. Um, so Applied Blockchain has been around since 2015. We develop blockchain applications, uh, so we're a specialist uh, blockchain studio, blockchain development studio. Um, we've done lots of projects since then, uh, probably goes into the hundreds. We've got a team of close to 80, uh, based in London and in Portugal. Um, and we've also got uh, a product team, headed by Andy here. Uh, there's a product called Silent Data, which adds data privacy uh, to, to smart contracts. Uh, these are some of the clients that we've worked with, uh, so some big enterprises. Oh, some big enterprises and also uh, some really interesting uh, players in, in the crypto space, uh, companies like Chainlink and Ledger and so on. And we are proud new members of the Hyperledger Foundation. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's get on with the predictions then. Um, the first one, so we, we look at blockchain as coming under cryptography. Uh, it obviously uses cryptography in order to have all of its features. Um, and alongside cryptography, we have artificial intelligence. We see these as kind of the two main areas of research <clears throat> at most academic institutions, uh, computer science departments. So these are really the two areas of, of growth and innovation in computer science. Um, if we compare them to each other, then uh, each of them has sort of these subsets, sub areas that have developed over time. Um, but there's an interesting feature uh, and kind of comparison of both. Uh, in cryptography, what we really get is more and more certainty. Right? We get mathematical certainty about events being true, about signatures uh, originating from certain parties or certain key holders. Um, and so we get certainty about data. The blockchain gives us certainty about a point in time at which events occurred and the fact that they can't be reversed. AI, on the other hand, is all about uncertainty, right? It's all probabilistic um, and based on statistical regression and neural networks and so on. So we get approximation, but we don't get certainty. Uh, in fact, the more and more we're using AI, the, the more we are at risk of relying on information that we don't know much about its origin and we don't know whether it was machine generated or, or human and so on. And so we see these two things complementing each other. Uh, and so that's really our first prediction um, is that AI and, uh, and cryptography will develop side by side as, as complementary technologies. Um, and I guess in terms of pen, the, the, we, we see the pendulum swinging. So uh, right now there's a lot of focus on AI uh, and a lot of interest uh, naturally uh, with the events of the last uh, few months. Um, and maybe a bit less interest in blockchain uh, at the expense of AI. Um, also given the events of uh, the last few, well, it's quite a few months ago now. Um, but we see this as a pendulum swinging because there's a need for both. Uh, because AI obviously brings us uh, new capabilities and efficiencies and so on, um, that, that grows. But the interest in cryptography will come back as AI gives us more uncertainty and we need to come back to understand origins and to know that things are true and certain. So the pendulum will swing, swing back to blockchain at some point. Um, the second prediction uh, is based more around user experience. And to date, for consumers, we've really had to rely on, on wallets, which usually take the form of a mobile app, a mobile wallet, uh, or a hardware-based wallet like a ledger. Um, while we techies and architects love these kind of solutions, for normal people, they're almost impossible to use. Um, and, uh, and so we've been looking at uh, what, are the, what are the ways that we can get um, regular people to use uh, blockchain without really having to, to deal with extra technology uh, and extra uh, concepts for them to learn as they would have to if they were using MetaMask. Uh, and the technology that we, that we see really driving the way, for this, the way forward for this is passkeys. Uh, passkeys is a tech that's already out there. It's being driven primarily by Apple and Google um, in order to enable passwordless login 
uh, two websites. Um, and uh, this is already, you can already see a lot of websites give you the option of, of logging in with pass keys. What it's really doing is using the biometrics of the device uh, in order to sign you up and log you into a, to a web service. The interesting thing, thing here is that Apple and Google and, and providers of pass keys, uh, they provide the infrastructure to, sh to create keys and share them across your devices and also to back them up in their cloud infrastructure. They don't have direct access to those keys but they have a protocol which allows the keys to be managed through the devices and through them and backed up. Now, this has the potential for users to have a certain type of wallet through a passkey and not actually have to deal with keys directly and not have to worry about key backup and so on. They could just be doing biometric checks and not even be worrying about keys and applications and mobile apps. They don't even need a mobile app. Um, so this is something that we see is really promising. We've already started implementing this across a number of our projects with our clients, uh, and it, it, it potentially takes away all of the friction of a wallet. I wouldn't use it to store an incredible amount of value, uh, because at the end of the day, it is infrastructure that sits with Apple and Google, but for everyday use cases and for onboarding the millions, it's great. It's because you, you, you are still relying on the infrastructure of Apple and Google, which is okay. I mean, most of our lives are reliant on their infrastructure. Uh, but if you've got very high value assets, um, you probably want a hardware wallet uh, or some kind of off chain uh, 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 solution for your keys as well. Offline. So that's our second prediction about pass keys. Our third prediction, and to be honest, I put these together at the beginning of the year, so some of this is already further along, uh, cheating a little bit. But the, the ZK roll ups. So. Um, in terms of scaling solutions and, uh, and I guess blockchains in general, um, Ethereum is still kind of the main, uh, the primary blockchain that we see for really most of the other, most of the assets that sit on other blockchains, they get created or originated or bridged to and from Ethereum. Uh, so Ethereum is still, is still kind of the, the mothership, if you like, for a lot of, uh, a lot of the assets that are out there. Um, but Ethereum doesn't scale well. Uh, and the, 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 really the, the solution that the Ethereum Foundation is driving for scaling Ethereum is through ZK rollups. Um, we've had optimistic rollups. Uh, now that we have ZK rollups, we see these as being more secure technically, uh, and, and they have a faster settlement time as well. Um, so we see these as uh, the way forward uh, for scaling Ethereum and for having secure and scalable blockchain infrastructure in the public space in the public blockchain space. Uh, and actually, we'd love to see a ZK roll-up uh, brought into the Hyperledger Foundation uh, and under that umbrella as well. So that it, it kind of gets that enterprise wrapper uh, and governance uh, as well. Um, our fourth prediction is kind of an extension of that ZK roll-up, which is something called app chains. Uh, some of the vendors call them super chains or they have their own terminology. But this is essentially taking ZK rollups and instead of just having a layer two network, uh, it's allowing you to have your own uh, kind of instance or network. Um, and this is kind of more suited to specific use cases, to enterprises and so on. Um, it, it, you kind of get all the security of a ZK rollup of being able to roll up to another chain and leaning on that uh, for security and backup and recovery. And that means that your own chain doesn't need to be so decentralized. And so it, it kind of, it, it's a natural fit for uh, more uh, kind of specific use cases, maybe exchanges, uh, more enterprise uh, use cases, and so on. Uh, and then the fifth uh, area of technology that we think uh, is kind of underutilized at the moment, uh, and will get more more traction, especially in the enterprise space, uh, is secure enclaves. Uh, we had a guy from Intel here a minute ago, uh, but Intel SGX is kind of the we see as the leader in this in terms of the features it offers. Um, and this is really a, a great privacy technology, and it's a great way to kind of extend blockchain functionality. Um, and so we've, we've ourselves done a lot of work in this space, and we've developed our products around it as well. Uh, so that's, that's the fifth and final prediction. Um, we have a predictions report, uh, if you really want to see some deeper and quite deep analysis into each of these areas, that's available on our website. Um, and a shameless plug for our podcast. Um, so this has been out for, for a while now. We've interviewed some industry leads and some of our clients and some uh, people behind some interesting use case in the blockchain space as well. 
Uh, products, do you want to do a quick... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so uh, a couple of, um, let me get on camera, a uh, couple of applied blockchain products. So um, we have Silent Data, which is really consisted of two sub products, uh, Oracle and Rollup. Uh, both are Intel, SGS Intel SGX based. Um, so Rollup is really a way of bringing privacy to ZK Rollup solutions. And uh, Oracle is a way of validating Web2 data uh, on Web3, so directly in smart contracts, particularly AML, KYC, private data, essentially. And we have a session later today, uh, 1 o'clock, I think, on, on the silent data Oracle. Right. That's it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.